day viewers, this is Tech Mag TV News. My name is Stephanie Truta and these are the headlines. ZRP and ZANU-PF allegedly banned testimonies in Kwekwe violence. Police threatened to block CCC rally scheduled for Mor Moronera on Saturday. Government suspends Petro Trade Board. Bread and maize to shoot as millers increase prices. Government urged to reduce fuel and taxes levies. The Zimbabwe Republic Police has threatened to block the country's main opposition party, the Citizens Coalition for Change, from holding a rally at Ruduka in Marondera on Saturday. On 8th of March, CCC informed ZRP of its plans to hold a district campaign star rally on the 12th of March in Rudaka open grounds from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in compliance with the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act. In a letter dated 9th March 2022 addressed to the CCC's Custom Mateo, the officer commanding Marondera Police District said the rally cannot go ahead. Part of the letter from ZRP read that a notification to hold the campaign rally comprising of a mini car rally around the Rudaka Stadium prior to the address was in fact a position that requires seven days notice to the regulating authorities according to the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act. The letter continued to add that given that reasoning, the notification is invalid and it does not fully comply with the requirements of the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act. This is the second star CCC rally that ZRP has banned in the following weeks after police blocked the opposition's party rally in Gokwe a fortnight ago. Despite the ban, thousands of CCC supporters in Gokwe defied the state security agents to meet the CCC change champion in Chief Nelson Chamisa. Chamisa's campaign rallies are ahead of the March 26 by elections and have been drawing huge crowds. Sano PF and Kwekwe police allegedly bar witnesses from testifying against Kwekwe violence, said an inside source to Take Mag TV. There is a collision with ZRP, Kwekwe police, and Sano PF as three witnesses are failing to testify. One of the witnesses told Take Mag TV that they were barred from testifying upon arrival at the courts by marked vehicles that were allegedly crowded with Sano PF. 11 of the 16 youths were released after being arrested following the quick wave violence which took the lives of Moneni Mube and left 17 people seriously injured. Zimbabwe's Energy Minister Zemu Soda has suspended the Petrol Trade Board on governance issues. In a statement made by Soda, he stated that while the Board of Directors for Petrol Trade was appointed on the 9th of March in 2022, he has suspended the entire board pending investigations into matters of corporate governance. Petro Trade Zimbabwe is a trading company responsible for downstream activities including selling petroleum products and lubricants through bulk sales and service stations. Recently, Zimbabwe raised the price of diesel by 17 cents and petrol by 16 cents on Wednesday, the second sharp increase inside four days. Only on March 5, energy regulator Zera had raised fuel prices to $1.51 for both diesel and petrol. Diesel now at $1.68 is 24 cents up from the February price of $1.44, while petrol at $1.67 per litre is now 23 cents more expensive. Few service stations accept the Zimbabwe dollar, but for those that do, a litre of diesel is now 218 Zimbabwe dollars and petrol is now 216 and 78 cents from the 195 and 99 cents and the 195 and 72 cents respectively. Flour and wheat prices shoot up as the Grain Millers Association of Zimbabwe announces a 15% increase in mini meal and bread flour prices. In a statement on Thursday, GMAZ Chairman Mr. Tafadzwa Musarara said the new prices are a result of the ongoing global tensions and uncertainty in Eastern Europe. The Grain Marketing Board has increased the cost of maize from 43,000 to 50,000 per metric ton, necessitating an upward review in the year. Mr. Musarara warned that the prices could increase further due to supply chain disruption. 
maize meal retail prices for 10 kg roller meal will be increased by a percent from 955 to 1099. Bread flour will move up by 14.74 percent from 119,000 to 136 and 544,000 per metric ton. Recently, fuel prices have also surged following the played geopolitics in the Balkan region, in particular the Russian-Ukraine conflict, adding substantially to operating costs. The government has been urged to review fuel taxes after the Zimbabwe Energy Regulatory Authority increased the prices of fuel twice in one week. The fuel prices have gone up significantly on the global market since Russia launched a military invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February, with Western powers responding by imposing economic sanctions on Moscow. Zivara Sekwa MP Edwin Oshoriwa implored the government to reduce fuel taxes and levies to make the product affordable for citizens. Mushiriwa said the various taxes and levies contribute approximately 30% to the price of fuel. Tobacco Association Zimbabwe President George Serenwa warned the recent fuel price hike will make tobacco farming less profitable. He stated as farmers were very much worried about the escalating prices of fuel which have been caused by the Ukraine crisis, they think that it's going to affect the profitability of tobacco production. And now, in our regional news, Egypt's inflation rate hit 10% in February. Official figures showed Thursday as the country heavily reliant on wheat imports from Russia and Ukraine raised for the full impact of this war. The Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics said in a statement that the annual headline inflation rate recorded 10% for February 22, compared to the 4.9 for the same month last year. In May 2019, Egypt's inflation rate hovered at 11% before easing in the following months. Campers attributed the latest hike to a surge in prices of food, especially vegetables, bread, and grain. Last week, the global food price index reached an all-time high, soaring to 24.1% above its level the year before, according to the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization. Russia's invasion of Ukraine last month had aggravated a global surge in prices of key commodities, including food and oil. On Wednesday, Egypt's finance minister, Mohamed Mait, said the Russia-Ukraine crisis will directly affect Egypt. Wheat provisions in the state's budget will soar by around 15 billion Egyptian pounds, he told the news conference. Egypt is one of the world's largest wheat importers and currently purchases a ton of wheat at 400 US dollars from the 250 last year. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has appointed experienced jurist Raymond Zondo as the country's new chief justice, effective the 1st of April. The announcement was made in a statement released on Thursday after a public selection process. Zondo, who has served as Deputy Chief Justice at the Constitutional Court since 2017, became the public face of Ramaphosa's anti-corruption drive while heading a recent national inquiry into allegations of widespread corruption under the presidency of Jacob Zuma, the previous head of state. Last year, the country's highest constitutional court sentenced Zuma to 15 months imprisonment after he failed to appear at the Zondo corruption inquiry despite being instructed to do so. In January, the inquiry's first published report pointed to the systematic corruption during Zuma's tenure, following three years of investigation and more than 300 witnesses. Ramaphosa replaced Zuma as president in 2018 after narrowly defeating him at a governing African National Congress Party elective conference a few months prior. And now, in our international news, Zimbabwe has received 6.68 million from the World Bank to enhance its response measures in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic under the Zimbabwean COVID Emergency Response Project. The bank has extended nearly a billion dollars funding assistance to Zimbabwe since independence, including commercial loans which have been temporarily suspended over pending arrears. Finance and Economic Development Minister Tui Nube said the signing ceremony in Harare Wednesday was a gesture by the Brenton Woods Institution and it symbolized strong partnership and deepened cooperation with the worldwide lender. Mansa Nube said the support came in at a time when the government had already spent 
over 122 million on the procurement of vaccines from various countries. He said the government was committed to continuing mobilization, additional resources to ensure the target population was fully vaccinated and livelihoods were protected. He added the government also appreciated the complimentary support received from development partners amounting to 150 million towards the mitigating the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. World Bank Country Director Ms. Mara Warwick said the ZCERP was introduced as an additional layer to support the World Bank and has been providing to the health sector through the Health Sector Development Support Project and the Zimbabwe Adai Recovery Project. And now in our tech news, amid a devastating war in Ukraine that has already claimed thousands of lives and forced nearly 2 million Ukrainians to become refugees, retired March Gen Robert Latif, an adjunct professor at the John J. Riley Center for Science, Technology and Values, offers context and advice on modern warfare and how to step back from the brink of war in his book. Future, Peace, Technology, Aggression and the Rush to War, published by University of Notre Dame Press, is a sequel to his 2017 book, Future War, Preparing for the New Global Battlefield. The book mentions that unlike the past, today's weapons are too complex to understand even by those who employ them and more concerning still is the fact that modern weapons and decisions to use them are increasingly computer controlled with human decision making receding into the background and being replaced by automatization. Unproved technologies incorporating artificial intelligence and autonomous behavior has been rushed into weapons and decision aids. He noted the public has been led to believe that technology will make wars easier to fight, but that is, that is untrue. In fact, some new technologies that are so enthralling that they might actually increase the chances of war. Microsoft released a new insider build for Windows 11 with some two new applications that will be default apps on Windows 11 going forward on many PCs. The two apps in question are Microsoft Family and Clipchat. Windows default applications are designed to provide functionality out of the box. Common apps such as Notepad for plain text editing, Windows Media Player for media playback, and Snip and Sketch for screen capturing add support for common tasks to the Windows. Windows users may download and install third app party applications, which often come with improved functionality and better support. This has been TechMag TV News. Thank you for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe as we keep bringing you more top stories.